Hello, my beautiful and courageous friends. It's Natalie Kelly here, the TBI coach. And today I'm here with Alaric Aranander. When the waves came and when the storm raged, found myself falling into the ground. When the wind blew, that's when it fell through. And I don't know how to turn it around. I know there's more to me than the record you see. There's more to be. I'm still on the journey. Dr. Aaron Ender is a neuroscientist and he has been doing neuro research for a very, very long time across the planet. And can you tell us just a little bit about your background? And Thank you, Natalie and everybody who's watching. Yes, uh, I trained for a long time in different disciplines. Eventually, I got my PhD in graduate work at UCLA. I joined faculty at UCLA. I was on faculty there for a while. And then I joined other universities around the world doing different projects. And since that time, in that academic setting, I've had my own Brain Research Institute, and I've traveled around the world meeting with people in medical institutions and military and governments and health situations, um, every place and everybody, because everybody has a brain, mm -hmm. and everybody's brain wants to work better to have a better life. And now we're talking about people with traumatic brain injury, which is a very significant problem, and individually and collectively it needs to be taken care of and it's sort of not making the progress we want. Yeah, exactly. And thank you this, so much for being here. Yeah. It makes such a big difference for yeah. people with traumatic brain injury to have yeah, the information it's, it's, that you it's, have. It's, it's, a, it's a silent thing. Yeah. I mean, people just don't appreciate the depth of impact on the individual or its impact in society and the cost to society. That's true. Yeah. It's very invisible from the outside. And we continue to have kids play soccer with their heads. We mm -hmm. continue to have all these sports teams with violent collisions and and uh, and we also when people do have accidents which do happen um, the medical institution is not really up on the fact that oh you actually had a TBI and this is what you should be doing about it because people come through the emergency rooms all the time right. and because they're not unconscious didn't lose consciousness there's nothing on the CAT scan then you're okay just go out there and have some aspirin that's not okay right. these people especially if they get another hit in a recent time and another hit their brains are very vulnerable to having some major downtime. So, yeah. and it's, I it's, can say that was certainly my experience yep. with going to an ER room and then yep. not having it yeah, found. Yeah. But now there's a lot of good technologies actually. I mean, now if they have the right equipment, they can do a DTI, which means looking at the fiber tracks. And there's now two kinds of technologies for on the field scenario or in the on in the site thing. One is using sonar, where you can actually measure the sort of gurgling of the brain or the sort of vibrations of the brain and you can tell whether it's happy or not mm -hmm. and you can also they have some good EEG things now where you can put a little simple electrodes on and very quickly say that brain needs to rest no more in the game or you have to do x y or z and when you say on the field are you talking about they're actually on the football field yes. or on the soccer field you could be right there in the soccer field or football field or in the ER room and you could know with either through the sonar technology or the EEG technology very quickly how the brain is doing and also Ultimately, those same technologies, in particular EEG, can tell you what the prognosis is going to be. It can mm -hmm. really give you, a, I mean, the standard prognosis, mm -hmm. not the prognosis we're going to talk about today. But the standard prognosis usually has a ramp, goes up, and then it plateaus off. And people reach a certain level of you know, rehab, and then that's it, basically, for most people. And EEG can actually presently tell you about that ramp. Now, we want to say that that ramp should speed up, and it should be going on for a long, long time. Now, do they need a particular kind of EEG because... Yes, right? most you, you won't find it in most places. But because actually, it's becoming... that's what my experience was. Yeah, Again, EEG yeah. didn't show anything. It's becoming more prevalent because we have the machinery and the software, but it's been known for almost 20 years now that certain discriminative functions in the brain analysis will tell you how your brain is and where it's going. Mm -hmm. And that's now available if you look for it. Um, you just need to find the right person with the EEG there's many people who are practicing neurobiofeedback now mm -hmm. that actually have that capability, not only of neurobiofeedback, but of the analysis of the prognosis. And so that's mm -hmm. really becoming more available. Um, so what specifically should people ask for if they're wanting to get those tests that are kind of cutting, that are cutting edge and that can tell them what's going right. on? There's two things. One, you want to say you want uh, a discriminative analysis of your brain waves. And the person, if they know what that means, will be able to do it. If not, they'll say, I don't know what you're talking about. The second thing you can do is say, there's a gentleman called Bob Thatcher. 
T-H-A-T-C-H-E-R, like Margaret, Margaret Thatcher, Bob mm -hmm. Thatcher, who is the driving force and the intelligence behind this, among with other people, but he's the main person. And if they don't know, say, contact Bob Thatcher, and he'll tell you how you can do this for me and anybody else. But Bob Thatcher, he has a website and the whole thing, but uh, Applied uh, Neurosciences, right. AppliedNeurosciences.com. So he, that's invaluable, what they can do there. But we really wanted to talk about other technologies, technologies that go to a deeper level mm -hmm. than driving the brain in a certain thing or finding out what the brain is doing at a particular time. Yeah, so tell us about um, neurobiofeedback. Okay, neurobiofeedback is where an individual has some, a couple leads on their head. It could be a few, but now it's many because it's inexpensive to have many and many means more information. And it used to be a long time ago, just a few electrodes and something very simple where a person watched the screen and the screen told them how close they were getting to some function of how the brain should be functioning. It may not be functioning well now, but if they were functioning more like this, that the feedback with this screen, like a helicopter going up or down or a waterfall moving, it would help them adjust their brain. Their brain will find that screen and that feedback and it would be able to adjust their brain waves. Mm -hmm. So it was a way of adjusting brain waves. And the person had to put some effort into figuring out how to be yes. in the proper brain And it's waves. actually pretty simple, but it is okay. relatively effortless. Um, mm -hmm. But it is attention. You are, are focused on the screen and you're trying to help the brain find this particular place in its, in its brain state to adjust it to a better state than where it was. Okay? Now that was a simple version and it had some value, but not a great deal. But now, um, in the last five years, 10 at the most, about five years, there's now this new way of doing it where you now have more electrodes and you get a picture of the configuration of the whole brain. And you say, how does that configuration of your TBI brain compare to a standard brain based on measuring many, many normal people that don't have TBI? That doesn't mean they're geniuses or that they're crazy, but they're just normal. Mm -hmm. So here's a normal configuration. And here is your TBI configuration. Can we get them closer and closer together? Can we adjust your TBI brain to that normal brain for your age group and your sex and stuff like that? And that's easily done. And it's done very quickly and it has very fast results. So people can adjust their brains very quickly with this neurobiofeedback. In particular, you ask for Loretta, L-O-R-E-T-A, a Loretta type where you're looking at variability in the brain configuration. So if you do a Loretta neurobiofeedback. And again, mention uh, Bob Thatcher and mention applied neurosciences. Then, and there are many people now around the United States and the world that are starting to do this. But again, Bob has been his driving force for making this available. And now people are trained to do it. And it's very simple and it actually works. It's quite effective. Now it's maybe not the most effective or the end point, but it's definitely far better than the original biofeedback and it's far better than not doing neurobiofeedback. Yeah. So I would encourage people to investigate this in their local area. They'll find somebody in the United States and then they'll find somebody in their local area. Great. But neurobiofeedback can be a good thing because it can adjust the brain, the whole brain in a way, the configuration of the electrical activity to a more normal consideration. Yeah. Um, I actually found uh, neurobiofeedback really helpful in my recovery and it didn't good. fix everything, but it got yeah. me to the next level. It was That's like good. a staircase, so very I good. did several yeah. sessions. Yeah, we want, we want to take people on the curve when they come out, if they had a concussion, and, and with TBI, usually you don't lose awareness. Sometimes you can. And uh, we want them to have a good ramp. We want to have a good recovery ramp, a mm -hmm. good angle, and we want that to keep going and going and going. There's a tendency for it to fall off and plateau, and then you're just stuck with that sort of the rest of your life. Now, there's no proof that it has to be that way the rest of your life, because you could be out five years out, 10 years out, and if you start a neurobiofeedback, the brain is plastic. And we can talk about this in another section here, but the brain being very plastic means that at any time in your life, where they should to your TBI incidence, or even to your age, makes no difference. You could be 80 years old. Regardless of your age or how long it's been since your TBI, your brain is still plastic. It's still wanting to be better, to be more organized, to be more functional, to be more adaptable to what you want it to do, to learn to recover that function or recover that ability. So basically, your brain is ready to move forward. Mm -hmm. And neurobiofeedback is one way to actually bootstrap it up again. Right. So don't think just because you plateaued off and you've been out three or four years and this is just the way it is, it doesn't have to be that way. 
your brain can recover a huge amount of potentiality if you just have the right technology and tools to do that. And that neurobiofeedback is one of those. Yeah, and thank you so much for that message. That's yeah. the thing we all really need to hear. Yeah. And so often we hear you have a year to recover or you've mm. got two years to recover and then you're done. Yeah. And we really need to counter that with knowing that our brains can continue forever yeah. it's to get always, better and better. It's always ready. Yeah, all that's right. beautiful. Now, if there's damage, there's always gonna be, probably be some damage there. But we have to remember that the brain is seldom completely used anyway. And most people have been shown so many times there's workarounds in the brain for many, many mm -hmm. things. You could lose use of an arm and if you properly rehab, you get that arm back in almost every case. So there's lots of rehab potential in every brain. It may not be the full thing, but it's more than what power we're using now. Yeah. And we just have to go for it. Yeah. You have to want it too, right? Because this is an individual thing. It's a matter of attention and motivation and desire and energy mm -hmm. and it just you have to be there and you have to you have it's like learning you have to work at it and if you put yourself into it then these new technologies will help you raise yourself beautiful thank you so much for being here with us and sharing your inspirational message <laughs> with with uh traumatic brain injury friends here thank you natalie you're welcome and thank and if, all of you too and if you have any questions or comments please put them on the uh, section down below and don't forget to subscribe thanks I don't know how to turn it around. I know there's more to me. Hello, my beautiful friends. This is Natalie Kelly, the TBI coach, and I am here with Dr. Aaron. Oh, crap. <laughs> Aaron and her. Let me do that Aaron, again. Aaron, oh, crap. <laughs> That's kind of Irish, isn't it? Yeah. Son of crap. We're I'm glad you're not yeah, taking yeah. this personally. It's just yeah, like the short term memory thing. Okay, I'm going to do that again.